whatsoever. For those of you joining, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're gonna give it about a minute or so to let everybody in the room before we start the presentation. Thanks for your patience. I see the number start slowing down, so <clears throat> we're going to begin. Uh, good afternoon and every and or evening, uh, everyone, depending on where you're at. I want to thank everyone for joining us today in our continuation of our safety webinar series. My name is Lily Calderon, the Director of Health and Safety Programs for the International. Joining us today is Dave Wysocki, MTES National Safety Director. Now, Dave has been with us since we began our webinar series over two years ago. Thank you, Dave, for your continued participation and great insights. Today, joining us for the first time in our guest presenter is Pete Cole, MTES National Training Coordinator. Pete Cole is an 18-year member of Local 5 Pennsylvania. He worked restoration in the Northeast region. He was a foreman for two different contractors, and he also worked on the PA State Capitol. While in the field, his responsibilities included being a safety leader in many different areas of various projects. Pete has been with MTEP for eight years. Welcome, Pete. Your Thank areas you, of expertise are greatly appreciated. I would like to relay a short message from IU Secretary Treasurer Jerry Sullivan. He hopes that everyone enjoys today's webinar and thanks everyone for their commitment for sa to safety. Today's webinar will focus on ladder safety. This is our second installment on ladder safety. We also wanted to emphasize that March is National Ladder Safety Month. With the increase of ladder incidents and citations on the rise, in 2022, on OSHA's top 10, ladders were the fourth most cited, most citation, most cited citation last year, uh, that year. And this last year, it moved up to number three. There are many reasons for the uprise in citations and incidents from improper use of the ladder to not using the right ladder for the job task. And others that Pete will dive into during today's presentation. Our continued focus here at the IU and at MTEF is making sure everyone, every one of our members returns home each and every day. Construction is a high risk industry. Hazards are at every corner, but with training and hazard awareness, we can mitigate those risks. Before we begin, I will note that today we will be discussing US OSHA standards. Though Canadian standards might be similar, we will not be citing any of them to, on today's call. We do want to let everyone know that no matter whether you are in the U.S. or Canada, these hazards exist on all job sites, so the information could be useful in abating these hazards on all job sites. A few housekeeping items. This webinar is being recorded and will be available for viewing on our website, bacweb.org backslash safety, as well as all of our past webinars. We'll have a question and answer section at the conclusion of our presentation. Please use the Q&A box to submit questions during the presentation and uh, at the end, if you wish. We'll get, the, we'll get to them at the Q&A session. And as always, please feel free to submit any recommendations for future webinars. Thank you all. And with that, we will begin. Pete, I turn the mic right. to you. Thanks, Lily. So Ryan, you can go to the next slide, please. So, you know, ladders are very prevalent on all of our job sites. And this is something that we typically deal with every day, whether you're working on them or getting from one location to another. But one thing important to know is that, you know, there's a lot of workers each year that are injured, right? So, you know, statistics are 160,000 workers are injured and over 300 fatalities occur each year while working on ladders or using ladders. So whether it be, you know, you know, ascending or descending or getting off of the ladder, whichever it may be, you know, ladders are, are a much needed tool for our industry, but they're also one of the largest hazards that we have. Next slide, please. So most injuries or fatalities are avoidable. So when we're talking about these things and it's the biggest recommendation I can give everyone is to follow manufacturer instructions. 
don't misuse the ladders. Use them in the, in the proper manner. I mean, you can look at some of the photos that are there. Some of them, they're damaged ladders, but the rungs damage could be side rails, the foot. And if you look at the, you know, the slide to the right there, you know, stacking unstable objects underneath a ladder leg to increase height or, or try to stabilize that ladder is not a good solution. There's other things that are out there that, that can be used in place of this instead of trying to makeshift something, you know, for working. We want to make sure that we're operating safely every time we get on and off a ladder or when we're working off of it. Next slide, please. So this is under our, our subpart CF or yeah, subpart X. So that's a ladder section in uh, our co code of federal regulations in 1926. So if we look at number one, these are top five sections that are cited. So the first one is our portable ladder, which in this, in this situation is an extension ladder is not extended three foot above an upper landing surface. So, 1,852 citations were issued, you know, with this particular infraction. And this is a very easy one to, you know, to, to understand. And actually when you're on a site and you're setting up a ladder to kind of figure out, and we'll talk about some of this as we go on. The second one, ladders not used for the purpose of design. So this would be, if I had, for example, if I had a step ladder, and it wasn't meant to be leaning against the wall because there are ones that are meant for that use. But if you have one that wasn't meant for that use and not using it for that design, so you're, it's, a, it's a misuse of a ladder. So the third one, top step of a step ladder uses a step. You say there's an area there that is, it'll say right on top of the ladder, did not use as a step. So that obviously that's, that's one that's being, you know, that's, that's number three on the list. Number four, Carrying loads or objects causing loss of balance. Anytime you're climbing up and down a ladder, you should not be carrying loads that make you off balance or make it unstable. And number five, portable ladders with structural defects are not marked properly. So this goes back to the ladder inspection part, and we're going to cover this as well. So we're going to go through all these different things as we go throughout this, this webinar, covering some of these things with these different ladder types and we get into the inspection requirements and all that. Next slide, please. So now we're going to talk about what are the five major, major causes of ladder falls. So one is incorrect extension ladder setup angle. All right, and we're going to discuss this and what it's supposed to be. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that we can do this, and we're going to have those discussions as well. Number two is inappropriate ladder selection. You know, we're talking about proper duty rating. We're going to cover all those and what, you know, following the duty rating for each ladder. And some of them, it's just a matter of selecting the, the correct ladder according to the color of the ladder. And we're going to have a little bit of discussion about that as well. Number four would be improper use, overreaching, carrying objects. We did talk about that before as well, right? So we're, we don't want to overreach. That's a major concern when we're, when we're using, especially working off of a ladder. Number five would be lack of access to safety tools and information, right? So we want to make sure that we have the training that we need to do all these things. Next slide, please. Other factors, that one of the reasons we have falls, sometimes we get in a hurry when we're setting ladders up or using them, we're trying to get, you know, do our work, we're, you know, we're production driven. so. We get in a hurry and do things, but when you're working or ascending or descending the ladder, take your time doing this. Do it and do it in a safe manner. Sudden movement can also cause issues if we have, you know, loss of balance or something where the ladder could shift. If it isn't secured well enough, that can cause that. Um, not paying attention or, you know, maybe getting a little bit of complacent when we're using ladders or uh, for whatever application we have. You want to make sure that, you know, when you're on that ladder, be, be aware all times of, of the safety issues that exist. Uh, could, this was a big one. Condition of the ladder. I mean, I think a lot of times we're using ladders and, need, you know, due to, especially around a construction site, if there's issues with them that maybe are not as apparent as they should be, but for whatever reason, 
Uh, could be could be mud that was on a ladder from you know going up a scaffolding or something with people's boots, and you, maybe there's something that's overseen. So inspection really is important with this part of this. Uh, user's physical condition. I mean, it's it's like a, some of the other things that we do when we talk about, for example, uh, respiratory protection. Are you in physical? Is your physical condition well enough for you to wear a respirator, right? So this is a physical condition. Are you physically able enough to climb a ladder without having, you know, some type of issue with, you know, with your own personal health? And the one one that we don't really think of, I mean, typically we have, you know, footwear that's appropriate for construction, but some people that, you know, that use ladders on a regular basis don't have appropriate footwear. So you want a hard soled boot that doesn't cause foot fatigue when you're climbing and descending a ladder. Next slide, please. So, you know, ladder set up, the proper way to set up a ladder after you make your ladder selection, you want to look for a nice stable base to put your the bottom of your ladder on, out of the way location. You don't want to be in any kind of traffic area where you could have you know, not just vehicular traffic, but pedestrian traffic as well. And you want to make sure you have good, suitable weather, you know, conditions. You don't want to be, you know, if, if the, even even if you have weather that was bad prior to the day before, maybe, the, the you know, for example, this extension ladder, the ground was getting a little bit soft and maybe, you know, we were getting the ladder, the bottom cleats were actually digging too far in and causing one side to become more unstable than another. So, you know, these are things that you have to watch out for. And, and a big one as well is wind. So, you know, wind can, can be a contributing factor if the ladder isn't secured well enough. And then when you talk about other other weather with rain or snow, it become, makes the rung slick or slippery. And then you can have some issues with traction and footing that you could actually slip and fall from that ladder. Next selection, please. So... <coughs> Another thing, right, be safe. If you're not feeling well or you have some type of medical condition or you have high winds or maybe you look the duty rating is insufficient, do not climb the ladder. Stay off of the ladder and make the corrections that need be. If someone else needs to go up the ladder because you're not feeling well, have someone else do it if it's a matter of getting materials or supplies. You know, if you have to get to that location and pull them up, you know, with, with the use of a a tagline or whatever that's what we're going to do high winds be always be aware of that make sure you know if try to put i mean a lot of times on in buildings when we're, where we're working we may have an access point that is out of the wind somewhere else if if it's possible let's do that let's move the ladder to a, a safer location and of course we talked about the footwear too right and and the duty rating next slide please so here are our duty ratings. So if we have type one double A special duty for rugged use, our duty or rating or lo rate of load is 375 pounds. So this, you know, if yeah. we're looking at this 375, we're talking about the, the weight of yourself, the weight of your equipment, your clothing, and any other items that are placed on this ladder. That's that's your that's your rating. That's your load rating. So if we look at the next one down, extra heavy duty, industrial type, 300 pounds. One, heavy duty, industrial, 250 pounds. Two, medium duty, commercial, 225. And then when we get into the light duty ladders, we're talking about a household ladder of 200 pounds. Next slide, please. So on the color code system, if we talk about you know, the duty ratings for ladders. If we look at type three, they're typically red, right? Light duty, red, 200 pound capacity. Type two, medium duty, 225 or green. Um, type one, heavy duty, 250 or blue. Uh, type one, a extra heavy duty, 300 pounds, orange. And type one, double a 375 pounds or yellow. Most of the ladders that we should see on a construction site should be of the orange and yellow variety. They're the ladders that we want to see that we know can actually support the duty rating because you have so many workers on a construction site or on a job site. You don't, there's no way physically to know like what everyone's, you know, calculated uh, 
load is that we're going to place on that ladder. So we want to make sure that we have something that's sufficient enough for everyone that's on that site. Next slide, please. So even at the time of purchase, we're going to perform inspections. There's, you know, there could be, you know, factory defects that occur if we have missing rivets or bolts or something like that, where the connection points are on a ladder and the side rails to the steps. We want to make sure we do our inspection, look through everything, go through the inspection requirements, look at the, look at the side rails, look at the look at the bottom of the ladder, the the foots, look at the top. Every every part of this ladder, and you know, in this case, it, we're showing a step ladder. So we're we're looking at the spreader bar assembly that's in the middle. We want to make sure that you know they're functioning properly. They're not bent. Uh, they're opening and they're in the, they can lock in a lock position. That so when we're putting this ladder to its proper use, that we're not going to have issues of instability, or we you know we could overre or lose our balance or any of those things. So we can make sure that we're going to work in a safe manner. Next slide, please. So inspection items, right? These are these items should include examine for loose damage or missing parts, check for bent or damaged spreader bars, check rung, rung to side rail connections, make sure we're good with those. Make sure the rung locks, if we're using the extension ladder, make sure they're in proper working condition and they're not, they don't get stuck in an open position and they actually close properly and what they're supposed to do. Check the rivets and bolts and other connections. Make sure everything's in working condition and fastened together securely. We want to make sure we don't have any issues with that. Make sure the ladder's free from slippery substances. You know, that's just part of the inspection. So if there's something there, that's a correction that's made. Go back through, wipe everything off. Make sure we're in good condition with that so we don't slip. And, you know, if we have an extension ladder that we're going to use Make sure the rope and pulley th system is in working order, not damaged. Check the rope for frays. If, if there's something that's wrong with any of these things that you see, then we need to actually take the ladder out of service, mark it as such, put a tag on it, and not have subject that ladder for someone else to use to make sure that you know we don't have an incident with someone else getting hurt on that ladder. Next slide, please. So if you have structural defects or faulty components are found, you know, you want, like we said, we want to tag this. We want to take it out of service, mark it, do not use, withdraw from service until repaired. Until repaired. So we're going to look at all these things and determine if, you know, maybe a repair is possible. If not, then we're going to do something else. We're going to remove this ladder completely and actually to the point of disassembly if we're going to actually throw it out and get rid of it we're going to we're going to take it apart so it's un will not ever be used again we don't want someone pulling ladders out of a dumpster and taking them home and using them and becoming hurt that way either we want to make sure if this uh, the structural defects are to a point where it is a direct risk and it's not going to be a functional ladder disassemble it cut it apart get rid of it and before you throw it away Next slide, please. So training is a big part of this. So when you're doing training, it is the employer's responsibility for training. You know, we want to make sure the employer has been trained or the employee of that employer has been trained by a competent person in the nature of fall hazards in a work area, maximum intended load, carrying, cap carrying capacities of the ladders, anything to do with ladders and the one thing important with this is every time we use a ladder there, there are going to be different issues that we're going to have as far as you know the nature of fall so i mean depending on the type of ladder that's used and the location of the ladder you know these things are going to be going over all the time when you have <coughs> different location for a ladder different site Everything changes. You need to inspect it again. It needs to be looked at. All the conditions need to be met for, you know, as far as the setup angle, everything. Every time you do this, you want to make sure that you're going to follow this, you know, to the T. Make sure that you're going to perform everything the way that you should. Next slide, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Avoiding sudden movements, right? So when you're going up and down a ladder, you don't want to have any sudden movements. And you want to make sure that you keep 
your belt buckle, so to speak, in the center of that ladder between the side rails. Overreaching is a big issue with ladders and falls that we have. Um, contain yourself in the center section of that ladder at all times, especially when climbing and when we're using step ladders or using extension ladders, you want to face the ladder going ascending and descending up and down that ladder. We want to make sure that we don't, you know, don't walk down backwards. Don't try to miss rungs or jump off the ladder one step at a time. Take your time going up and down and make sure that you stay between those side rails. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so ladder users you know, must face the ladder. We just talked about that. Maintain three points of contact, <clears throat> either two hands and one foot or two feet and one hand at all times. <clears throat> you want to make sure, you know, you're on the rungs or the side rails. And if you look, I mean, if you look at the picture to the left there, we could see the person that's, that actually is ascending that ladder has a hold of the side rails. He has one foot on one rung and he's actually moving his foot. So that that's your proper method for going up and down a ladder. <clears throat> when you're looking at photos like this to the right, that becomes an issue, right? So that back portion of that step ladder is not intended for you to stand on. That is just a, a point that's there. You know, that bracing is put in there strictly for support for that ladder. It's not intended for steps. So that's misuse of a ladder and you're, and you know, you're above that area. You're not facing a ladder. You actually have your legs crossed. That is a recipe for a fall. Next slide, please. So don't get in the habit of carrying tools or other work items when you're going up and down a ladder, make sure you know, if you, it, if at all possible that, you know, you have someone there, if, if you need to pull tools up with, you know, a, a tow line or whatever you have, a piece of rope, make sure you get, you know, bring your tools up in that manner. Don't carry anything. And this, you know, if you look at this photo, you know, that gentleman actually has a backpack on his tool belt is fine as well. As long as you're not carrying anything in your hands where you're actually breaking that three point of contact rule, because, Anything in either hand is going to do that. You're not going to be able to maintain your three points of contact at all times. You want to make sure you do that. Um, so, and you know, and work is, if, if possible, when in this situation, if you know you're going to be working or bringing equipment up and down a ladder, have another person there to, to assist with, with bringing tools up or loading them or unloading them. You know, and one person at a time on the ladder. No, two people are not intended for any ladder. Make sure that you know you're you're by yourself each time you ascend and descend a ladder. Next slide, please. So now we're going to get into ladders themselves. So this is a step ladder. If we look at it and we look at the different parts, we have, you know. We have spreaders in the center there that lock the ladder into position. You have front side rails, your steps, anti-slip safety shoes or feet. Top step, right? Not meant for climbing or standing, even on the top step. Not even, we're not talking about the top cap. We're talking about the top step. No climbing or standing. We're, we're going to stay off of that. Um, and if you look, what we just talked about in the previous slide or two slides ago, the rear non-climbing side rails, right? We're not, and those spreaders and those brace, that bracing on the back of the ladder is not intended for use, not for climbing use. We're going to stay off of that. It's strictly for reinforcement to make that ladder function properly. Next slide, please. So a step ladder in, in classification is just, is a self-supporting portable ladder that must be able to support at least four times the maximum intended load. So we talked about this prior, your weight, your tools, your equipment, clothing, your load, et cetera. That's, that's where you're gonna to check to see what your total weight is and make sure you have the proper duty rating for that ladder. Don't, if, you, if your duty rating is not met, then you need to get a ladder that's going to meet it. You cannot just use that ladder and, and proceed on your way to work. It's not, it's not a safe ladder. And, and that could, you know, that's misuse of a ladder as well, because you're not following the duty rating. You could be cited for that. 
Next slide, please. So there, here we go. We we're talking about a pretty common misuse. So if we look at this step ladder, the way it's leaning there against that post, the, the back feet are on a piece of concrete, you're subject to a fall. There's a definite hole there below this ladder section. It's not on a level surface, right? This is really comes down to improper ladder selection. So this is, this is not the intended use for this ladder. We don't want to avoid overreaching and make sure that we have sufficient height. But either way, this ladder is, is not good for this application. So we would not want to use that. Next slide, please. So platform ladders have become a little bit more common in the workplace as well. Uh, they've kind of, in certain situations, have taken some of the duties from step ladders away because you're unable to actually go above that top step. There's a platform there that you're, that you're standing area that you're going to be standing on. You're going to make sure that you know, you're not going to be able to go above that. Um, you know, they have a horizontal surface there for designated height. So you cannot extend your working height above that platform. Next, next slide, please. You know, the biggest issue with this, we want to make sure any of these self-supporting ladders have a level base. So this is a, this is a great application for this ladder. So you can see it's on a flat surface. It's for, it's the intended use for this ladder. And it's the proper ladder selection because it's it's of the working height. Next slide, please. So extension ladders. So extension ladders, when we get into the different parts of those, we have you know a base base section, um, they and a the fly section. So the, they both have side rails. One fits inside the other. Um, <clears throat> the base section has you know your anti-slip safety shoe feet that are there and your your fly section fits inside there and goes up and down that ladder now how this ladder operates is basically you'll have a rope and a pulley system there that you'll pull this up and it will lock into place with your rung locks next slide please so this is also a non-self-supporting ladder that must sustain four times the imposed load in a downward vertical direction. So now we're setting the angle. So the downward vertical direction, it, the proper angle for setting extension ladders is 75 and a half degrees. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. There are there are safety stickers on the side of the ladder from the manufacturers that, that give you the, the appropriate angle. You can use applications. NIOSH has one. It's a ladder app that you can actually put on the side of your ladder and it gives you the, the actual angle of your ladder down to the degree wherever you're at to tell you if it's safe in operation or you can actually buy even some other things some some little some little tools it's a, it's a leveling tool that would fit on inside your rail of your ladder out of the way that you could actually place on there as well and that works just as well as you know as anything else but next slide please another way to do this right so we talk about a four or a one to four base to height ratio. So the way to calculate the one to four, so every, every four feet in height of a ladder, I want one foot away from the wall where it's at. So that's an easier way in the field to actually calculate that 75 and a half degree angle. And if you look at the photo to the right there, you can see that this gentleman, this is, this is a very common and easy way to do this, where we'll put the toes of our shoes up against the base of the ladder and comfortably reach straight out in front of us to the rung that's directly in front of you. And with your hands fit on there while you're standing straight up, that is very close to that one to four base to height ratio. And that's a good way to calculate if your ladder's at a correct angle or not. Next slide, please. So, this was one of the things that we, we talked about, one of the most cited things. I think this was number one before. When portable ladders are used for access above an upper landing surface, the rail shall extend three feet, at least three feet above the upper landing surface. We want to make sure we have that because if we get too far down and we're trying to overstretch that ladder and 
when we get on and off of the ladder, it could be an issue with falling or displacing the ladder and causing an injury. So one, there's a couple easy ways to do this. Uh, just out of calculation, four rungs typically above that landing surface is three feet or more. So if you know when you're on the ground and you look up and you place your ladder, if you have four rungs above there, you you've reached that three foot extension above that lower level. Next slide, please. So we saw some photos earlier when we we saw some unstable objects on the bot on the bottom of an extension ladder to to get your the, the proper height on the one side. That's an incorrect way to do that. We don't want to use unstable objects to do this. What we want to do is find a ladder leveler, right? So if we can, there's devices for each manufacturer. You want to make sure you're using a proper device from that manufacturer that's approved by that manufacturer to put on the side of a ladder to, to actually level your ladder out in a proper manner. Do not stack anything underneath the feet. Make sure that you use one of the, or these devices to do this if you need to. This is the proper way and the safe way to operate when you're setting up extension ladders. Next slide, please. Another type of ladder, uh, very common on job sites now, they're hybrid type ladders. So they function in the same manner as an extension ladder, step ladder, or a platform ladder. They can kind of cover all three depending on the manufacturer and how they're constructed. But because they are able to move in air, like for example, if we look at the ladder to the right, we can actually unfold that ladder into an extension ladder and extend those inside rungs. They actually reach higher they can slide them out and there's certain lengths that you have to follow with these ladders. You have to know your height that you need to work at, but they can be used as a step ladder in the manner you see, or they could be used as an extension ladder. Now the model to the left that you see kind of replicates a platform ladder because there is a work platform up there with some gates and some netting and there's some leveling legs. But in either case, if used as a step ladder or a platform ladder, you want to make sure you have a flat stable base to place these ladders on. That's the that's the only that's the intended use for either one of these ladders when used as a platform or a step ladder. If we're using them as an extension ladder, for example, the, the ladder on the right, now we're going to follow all the extension ladder rules. You know, the one to four base to height ratio. You know, three feet above a landing area, etc. So that's how we're going to operate with that as an, if we were to use that as an extension ladder. Next slide, please. Right. As we just mentioned, <clears throat> some of these are equipped, these articulating, articulating ladders are equipped with, you know, integrated railing systems, tow boards, chains to prevent falls. This particular model that you see here has a, a, a back gate that's on it that can prevent you from, you know, losing your balance or falling backwards. Um, all kind of designs that are out there for different types of ladders. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Next slide, please. So fixed ladders are some other things that we're going to see, too. Now, in our opening slide, when we saw that fixed ladder that was on a scaffolding, a little bit different than this. So if we were to have a fixed ladder for access to a location, there's some there's some things that apply to fixed ladders. So if a fixed ladder you know, and it extends, you know, above 24 feet, we need to have a integrated, you know, so either self-retracting lifeline or some type of ladder safety device, right? In this case, if we look at, you know, there's a ladder safety device that's mounted in the center of this ladder, we can see, you know, you have to wear your personal fall rest system to actually ascend and descend on this ladder. So you go up, you'll be tied off or tied to that, that track system the whole way. Some of these, now this one in particular is a track system. Some of them are cable with a rope grab system, similar to a personal fall rest lifeline, or, um, a horizontal or a vertical lifeline that you would use for maybe suspended scaffold, for example, that this would be very similar to that. If, you know, sections, if you have a cage, 
they don't exceed 50 feet if you have a cage around them. If they're higher than that, you need rest platforms, right? We talk about rest platforms. They have to be incorporated and the ladder sections need to be offset as well when you're going up a fixed ladder. For example, some of the fixed ladders that you'll see if you know if it's higher height than that, then <clears throat> um, the, the 26 feet you need to have, or 24 feet, you need to have that rest platform. Next slide, please. So when you're using ladders, the biggest thing is mentioned in the very opening, always follow the manufacturer instructions and the guidelines when using ladders. So an easy way to do that, I mean, here's an inspection form. A lot of ladder manufacturers have these out there. You know, get an inspection form, do your inspection, keep track of all these things on the job site. Make sure you're, you know, you're going through these forms and you should have, you know, forms for you know each type of ladder like on here you have a step ladder a podium ladder which is your, your platform ladder and, and um, an extension ladder so go through your checklist do your inspection you know require you know inspect by a competent person you're gonna make sure that you know they have knowledge in this particular in all these ladders that they can go through and, and do their inspections check for defects missing parts whatever it may be and keep track of all these things you know, f throughout your work site. I mean, some work sites and some places that, you know, we work that there's, there may be four or five ladders on the job site. So make sure that, you know, you have inspection forms for each one of these ladder types and each of the one of the ladders that are being used on the job site to make sure that, you know, everyone on there, especially your team members are operating in a safe manner. Next slide, please. Ladders, rungs, and cleats, right, shall be parallel and level. They want to be uniformly spaced, and each step must be corrugated, knurled, or be coated with some type of skid-resistant material, right? We don't, and this is this is one of the slipping things. We talked about this earlier as well. When if we have a slippery substance or something that's on a ladder, we want to make sure that we have those that cleaned off, and there should be some type of skid-resistant, you know. On, for each rung, so whether it be door old or coated with skid resistant materials, whatever it is, that's a, that's a requirement for ladders. Next slide, please. Um, we talk about clearance distance between the side rails for portable ladders shall be 11 and a half inches, right? So each one of these ladders that you're going to use, is, that's the distance between the side rails, you know, in your in your step or from side rail to side rail, that's your step uh, dimensions. And one thing to, to mention as well, you know, when we're talking about especially extension ladders, we don't want to tie or fasten ladders together to extend working height. Get the correct ladder. That's misuse. We want to make sure that we get, what you know, if we need, a, if we need to uh, reach a height of, you know, 20 feet, make sure you have a 24 foot ladder or, or longer depending on your angle, correct? So we wanna make sure that we, we operate in a safe manner and have the right equipment and have the right ladders on the job site. Next slide, please. You know, ladders placed in any location where they could be possibly displaced by work activities, you wanna make sure you secure them against accidental accidental displacement. So you, it could be as easy as securing them. If we look at the, the photo to the left there, you know, they use the rope to secure it against a metal railing that was up there or a post um, to keep it from, you know, moving side to side. Ladders may also be secured at the bottom as well to keep, you know, keep displacement from them kicking out. And there's a, there's a couple different ways you can do those. There's some manufactured uh, items that are out there. If we look at the bottom right photo in the corner, that's a manufactured system for securing ladders. There's all kinds of different methods um, to, to do so. So, you know, make sure, and this is, you know, this is an important part of ladder use, especially when we're talking about extension ladders, making sure that we have them secured in, in possibly both positions, right? The top and the bottom to, to prevent displacement. Next slide, please. So one of the things we use portable ladders for a lot of times is to access different types of scaffolding that we use at work, right? For, for 
brick lane. So when we're talking about this, and our photos here are showing some high, well, mass climbing scaffolding. So if we look at mass climbing scaffolding, sometimes when we're using the, these types of scaffolds, we'll have, might have an extension ladder for access to the bottom, maybe when we're closer to the ground to get on and off, you know, for um, ascending, descending on and off of the scaffolding if we don't have a stair tower system or we're not moving the scaffolding up and down for access. The issue with that can be sometimes we forget that when we move this scaffolding up higher, that the ladder we selected for the, you know, the original use and original height is now no longer long enough to reach that platform safely and will actually raise the scaffolding without checking the ladder and it'll be tied to the top section, but it won't reach the ground. And we've had some issues with that in the past that we don't, we don't want to have that. So, you know, always make sure if you're using any type of extension ladder for access to mass climbing scaffolds, that we constantly check that ladder to make sure it is reaching that area of that platform that we can safely access it on and off without having any issues or having someone falling. We want to make sure that we, you know, we're constantly checking that. Next slide, please. So here we have, you know, a supported scaffold. So we're looking at this supported scaffold and we have this ladder set up and we're gonna look at some issues with this, right? So we're, and we wanna make sure we don't have any hazards that are associated with this. We make sure that we can reach all levels of this scaffolding, you know, when we're talking about this guardrails and end gates should be there to protect workers and they should be there on, you know, we're talking about, um, especially where we're accessing points on and off the end of the scaffold, we should have some type of end gate system that's directional where we can walk through it, but not back through it to where the ladder is and have a fall. So if we look at some of these things, um, let me click to the next, Ryan. So there's your ladder right there. So the issue with that is it's not really safely reaching all levels. And you can click again of that scaffolding, right? And we're missing tow boards and gates. So we're having issues there with even when we're accessing that ladder on and off of that platform that we could actually have a potential fall, not necessarily from the ladder, but maybe when we get on and off of it, on that, on that particular scaffolding platform and that level. Click again, please. Also where the access point is, there's a lot of clutter on that work service, right? So we wanna make sure all our areas below the ladder and each landing area are free from tripping hazards. We don't wanna have tripping hazards anytime we have access points to the ladder that can cause falls. Click again, please. So, you know, we talk about selecting ladders, right? And the correct ladder for the intended use. So we saw this before. We don't want to see with the misuse of ladders when we're talking about, you know, selecting you know, for this for this example, a step ladder to access this point up here when the proper ladder would have been an extension ladder and make sure we have a secure base. And, you know, maybe in this particular situation, because there's so many other hazards below this work area, I mean, maybe we want to have a, you know, uh, some type of fall protection or personal fall rest system in place, even with a retractable lanyard to keep from falling into that hole that's down below there. Next slide, please. So when you're using these ladders, right, at your work site, follow the, the rules and the manufacturer requirements. And as mentioned at the very beginning of this, our intent is for everyone to go home at the end of the day safe. We don't want any issues. We don't want people hurt on construction sites. Um, besides, you know, it, it's a it's a major, major problem as far as, you know, with, with your family members and, and, and the pain. And if you have injuries that require for you to be off work for a period of time, I mean, it, the, you know, there, it's really avoidable. So anytime you're using ladders on a work site, make sure that you're going through the proper protocol, all the safety inspections, the maintenance of the ladders, everything that you need to do. Be safe when you work out there. And like I said, we want everyone to go home safely. 
Next, please. Any questions? Thanks, Pete. Um, you have Pete's information here, also Dave Wasaki's and, and mine as well. So if you have any questions, uh, any further questions on, on ladders that we don't get to today and would like to get more information or get an answer to your question, please uh, email us. Um, thank you, Pete, again for for being uh, for being on today and discussing the importance of uh, ladder safety. Uh, Ryan, you can come off the screen, uh, off the PowerPoint, please. Thank you. Uh, again, thank you again. I mean, I hope that, you know, uh, you enjoyed being on. This is your first time on one of our safety webinars, so thank you again. Um, we did get a couple of questions in before, uh, before the start of the webinar today. Um, I'm going to go through them and uh, if, uh, one second, Ryan, can you stop sharing your screen? Okay, um, I'll get I'll go through them, and if uh, Pete or if Dave is still on, you guys can answer. That'd be great. Um, first question: When is it okay to repair a ladder? Um, so ladders can be repaired as long as you can restore the ladder back to its original condition. Um, the biggest issue is. You want to make sure you do an inspection. If there's any structural defects that compromise the structural integrity of the ladder, it must be removed and destroyed and taken out of service. But if there's minor things, as long as it meets the original design criteria, it can be put back and re repaired and put back into place. Before I, I know that um, Dave, you answered this uh, through the question and answer. But I want to just uh, share with everyone in case uh, not everyone uh, looked through the question and answer box. Uh, the question was: Are the old wood ladders still used? And if so, how do the do the, how do the how do you determine the weight rating it, it is? The same as the ones they build on site. Dave, do you want to answer that live, or do you want me to just read what you wrote? You might be off. Uh, I'll just read his response. If you use an older wooden ladder, it must have weight capacities visible and readable. OSHA has guidelines for job-made ladders. The ladders must support four times the intended weighted load. The ladder must meet load capacities, spacing of rungs, purpose, and limitations. Uh, also, he shared a, a link that I will put into the chat box so that you guys can see it. And you should be able to see that uh, that link in the chat box. Thank you, Dave, for answering that. And thank you for that question. Um, another question that was asked, um, is it okay to paint a wooden ladder now that we're on the topic of wooden ladders? No, it is not okay to paint a wooden ladder because any paint coating or opaque finishes on a ladder could potentially hide structural defects in that ladder. So no, no paint coatings are allowed on any wooden ladders. Thanks. And if anyone else has any other questions, uh, feel free uh, while I go through these other couple questions that came in earlier. Uh, when shall a ladder be provided? So ladders shall be provided at any personnel points with a uh, Access, when the access point is 19 inches or more in elevation and there's no ramp or runway or anything to access the ladder or access that location, if it's more than 19 inches, a ladder must be provided for access. Thank you. I got one more. Uh, how do you inspect a clamp-on ladder to a pipe scaffold? How do you inspect it? How do you make sure it's usable and meets all the re uh, requirements? So clamp on ladders, any, and this goes with any of our ladders, when we talked about the inspection requirements, that's done by a competent person of, for the ladders, right? So um, there's no designated information through OSHA for scaffold, integrated scaffold access ladders. And most of it's done by the manufacturers, but it still has to be inspected and, and ruled safe by a competent person. Awesome. Thank you. That's all the questions I had or from 
that came in earlier. Uh, give it one more go. If anybody has any other questions, this is the time. I don't see anything coming in. Again, I want to say thank you to Pete, Dave, Ryan, our AV. Um, but I, I do want to say that you know, when we talk about ladders, we're talking about job soft safety, right? But we all know that we use ladders at home. So please take this knowledge and bring it back home because, I mean, we sometimes think because we're home, we're safe. Uh, it's easier to do, right? We can get away with little things here and there, but those little things are what causes those incidents. And um, again, we don't want that even at home. Um, we have one more. Oh, we have, thank you. Thank you. Um, sorry, something. Yeah, so I just wanna make sure that, you know, we do take this not just on the job site, but also at home and with our friends and family, uh, because we all know that we use them uh, pretty much all the time. You know, whether it's today, whether it's in a week from now at home, we still use them to, you know, to do maintenance work at home. Um, again, thank you to Pete for joining us this uh, today. Um, thank you for all the letter knowledge that you have and provided. It was Dave. a pleasure. Thank you. And Dave as well. Thank you for joining us, Ryan. Thank you. And uh, I don't know if uh, either and you or D uh, Pete or Dave have any final thoughts. No, I just want to thank you too, Lily. Thanks for putting this on. I think it's a very important topic and um, something we need to continue to do in the future. Dave, anything? No, just uh, thanks to all of them. Like, like Lily pointed out, we do stuff at home. Just take this knowledge home. We become complacent at home and, you know, accidents do happen. But have a great night, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Yes. We'll see you thanks on the next everyone. one.